Yeah, good day. Welcome back to the channel. Gonna be showing you how to drill out a broken bolt, cut some new threads in a hard work position. I could say running into a unique problem there working well, I'll say unique, but a problem that does occur. And I'm not the first one that's went to change an exhaust manifold and had a stud broke, so hopefully this video helps someone out. Okay, in the process of changing an exhaust manifold, I broke one of the stud bolts off on a 2001 Ford Crown Victoria. I'm going to start here by cutting the uh, remains of the stud down. Yeah, I can say no use to drill through extra material. That and there's not a lot of room where this is at. It's the one clear at the back of the motor. Yes, at all costs, I'm hoping to be able to fix this on the car, not have to pull the head or the motor. And we're going to give it all we have here and see what happens. Yeah, I'm only going to cut it so far, and then after I cut it, I'm going to take and grind it down carefully. Don't want to cut too much, like I say, where the exhaust manifold bolts into the head and gouge it. And here you can see we're doing the grinding action with the cutoff tool. Yeah, I really enjoy this tight angle cutoff tool. It's good for a job like this and like I say it makes the grinding of this easier than just the regular cutoff tool. And like I say you can get at it just sort of get the right angle and keep working at it until you we get it smoothed down. Yeah this is one video I love making videos but I really did sad to make because I've tried at all costs not to have to get into this position and breaking the stud but well, here we are, and hopefully this will help someone out, and like I say, we'll work you through all the steps and how we're going to handle the problem. Okay, it's close to where we need, but we're going to take one more, just a little bit more, and it's about as far as there's some go with this tool, and it'll soon be ready to drill. Okay, now we have it pretty much flush with the head, about as flush as can make it. And now, I'm going to be using a right angle drill, but I need short drill bit, and I'm going to take here, this is the stud that came out, and get an idea how deep it need to be, put it in the bench vise, and I'm going to cut the drill bit down, I'm just sort of marking it there with my finger, and how deep it is. And I'm going to put a mark on it with the marker, and we're going to cut it with the three inch cutoff tool. Okay, now we have one shortened drill bit to use in the right angle drill, and here's the right angle drill. This is about this at Harper Freight uh, about two years ago. I've only ever needed it one other time. Yeah, it was on a valve cover bolt on the rear head on a Toyota Sienna. Not near as nerve wracking of a situation as what this is, but I was successful on that, but it was also it was a lot smaller bolt. And now we're back underneath the Crown Victoria, getting ready to see what's going to happen. Okay, round we go. And as you can see going in with this air drill, right angle, you never get in with a regular drill, or even for that matter, a right angle electric drill. And they're starting to drill into it. It's a buzzy sounding little drill, but mainly it's working. And one thing on uh, right angle drill, you can't get a lot of, in this area, can't put a lot of force behind it, so you must use extremely sharp drill bits. If your drill bits are even somewhat questionable, it's not going to work. And under no conditions do I want to snap this off. Okay, I redesigned the one drill bit, and then I found this set on Amazon. Already short stubby drill bits, and I just thought it would be a lot easier in trying to make a whole bunch more and cut up a bunch of drill bits. Okay, since I already had the eighth inch hole drilled, I'm starting on the 3 16th. That's that goes 3 32nd, eighth, 3 16th, quarter and 5 16th. And if you notice one other nice thing on that set, and that's not the one I found those in the shipping. I wasn't in a big hurry on the car. They have a hex head on them and they're a lot easier to t tighten up in the drill to prevent slipping. Okay, here we 
moved up to the quarter inch, going to spray it here. Yeah, any time drilling, I should uh, be using more than what I am, but use plenty of cutting thread oil. And the actual cutting thread oil does work better, but if all else, yes, I did it for the years. Even old motor drain oil works, but I can't believe over the years that I found the difference the actual cutting oil makes, except for my biggest problem is getting it to go where I need it to go, especially up in this tight area. Alrighty, making progress. I love seeing those pieces of metal shavings coming that means it's going there and these harbor freight drill is reversible this air angle drill which is a great asset also and take and grill drill some more and it's like i say really doing a fine job there it's jamming up a little bit but again with the auto reverse you can just back it out Alrighty, there we're about through on that. We need to just clean it out a little bit more. I'm gonna take another pass at it. And on it, the length of the drill bits is as deep as it needs to be. It needs to be probably around I'm gonna say about three quarters of an inch is all you need. And there's some more cutting oil. Now there again as I said it's not really cooperating, but you can always smear it with your finger. And we're now ready to go up to the 5 16th. This will be the final one we need to drill. And the 5 16th, and that's what I'll be doing, going to be using a 3 8 inch 16th thread per inch tap. Uh-oh, I got it stuck. The worst, but hey, we got it free. And earlier I made the comment you don't want to break the drill bit, and I literally mean that because you can't drill a broke drill bit. We're like an easy out, been there, tried that, got nowhere, and and again the goal on this is not to pull the cylinder head or the motor out of the car. It wouldn't really make me happy. Okay, and then we're getting it finished out, and it's about ready for the tap. Yeah, actually it's not about ready, it is ready for the tap. And you can see the Harbor Freight right angle drill did serve the purpose and got out of the mess. And now we're going to take and start to tap in. And this is sort of initially going to use this small wrench on the end of it because you can't use the T-handle in this area. And start working it in nice and slow and follow our angle. I think, again, it was sort of guesswork. I do have a drilled at an angle that will work i'm not going to say it's factory perfect but it will tighten up and do the job okay and as usual with tapping go carefully at it cut the threads and then we're going to take and work it back out and the taps just the same rule as the drill better to easy out don't snap one off that's the same problem you don't drill them and you can see we're starting to cut some metal you can see the shavings coming off of it and we're starting to get a few threads and I'm just cleaning out some of the threads with this little drill bit that was laying there the little eighth inch and we're going to take and go turn it in again yeah at least on the plus column on this it is aluminum instead of cast iron it makes it a little bit easier to tap it's not as hard to do is cast iron and here we're going to start with the wrench again and start turning it in some more but sadly after probably about a quarter of a way in it's getting too tight the wrench isn't going to have enough torque to do it and i first try a pair of vice grips and it's hard to get up in there to latch them on and i start working it again nice and back and forth just start trying to cut threads nice and gradual without breaking the tap and there it is turning again you see you're reaching up in way up above your head and again the vice grips not working so good on this and then i finally do come up with an idea after fighting with the vice grips is a small pair of uh, a small crescent wrench and that has the extra torque and it's you have a lot better feel of what you're doing so you don't break it off and we're going to turn it in some more and the crescent wrench is making it easier but it's still not a sunday school picnic by no means doing this but and we're going to take a few more turns and then we're going to take and turn it back out again 
and we're going to that's the key on doing this is work it a while till you feel it tightening up pretty good and then bring it back out clean your tap off get rid of those metal shavings and then take a fresh bite at it okay now i'm going to switch here back shortly to that little wrench and bring it the rest of the way out and that's proof you're making progress because that little wrench doesn't have a whole lot of torque but it's just working nice again like when it's cut the threads are cut properly like the bolt will work and there i'm just turning it out with my fingers and some more and get some more of her cutting oil in there sorry about the lighting it sort of was hard to position the light that i could see plus do the taping it's like i say not much room up in here and back in with her tap again well coated with the cutting thread oil and as you can see, made pretty good progress. It actually turned in a good ways just with using my fingers instead of any wrench. Now I'm going to skip right to the crescent wrench. And you're already having a pretty good start. And it's definitely, I'm getting a better angle on it. The threads are getting cut. And it's going a lot easier than it was earlier. One of the biggest problems I'm having now at this stage of the game, but that's true any time you get working on a car, your hands are getting oily and greasy and it's hard to grip your tools and such, but and stop, wipe them off, but that's sort of probably the biggest battle with this stage, and there's going to take and work it back out again. I say we're over halfway, getting downhill stretched pretty good on getting the threads cut. Okay, so a little bit more to go. It's starting to tighten up now finally, but yeah, it's not real far off of the final destination at this stage. And it's definitely, you can sure feel the difference in earlier and working the tap in. Considering the location of where this broke off and everything, it's not going bad. I guess one shouldn't complain, and it's appearing to be a success. And I can say it would be one of those deals just as good as never happened, but can't turn back the clock. And here we are going to take and bring it back out again. Till this stage in, and it's, you can sure feel the difference. It's starting to turn a lot easier. Not near the effort I had before. That's proof you were successful at cutting your threads. And I'm going to take now and go back to loosen it with the, that little baby wrench. Yeah, that little wrench goes a lot quicker than the crescent wrench. Actually, you have room to turn it. And not much more room up in there to fit that little wrench. But somehow, and you can see, we drilled the hole. And about done cutting our threads. And I have to take is catching a little bit. And there's coming out just turning with fingers almost, but not quite. Just one more little thread. And I do believe we are pretty much successful and done now out she comes and there comes all the shavings out now i'm just spraying some regular penetrating lubricant in it get rid of the metal shavings and then i'm going to take and just run it in one more time and you can see turning in just with my fingers i'm going to have to take and grab the little wrench and we'll see how far we can turn it with the little wrench already quite a bit farther than earlier i'm sure after this is run in one more time it will be ready to take and call it a completed job and now we're going to have to it's all but in but i'm going to have to grab the crescent wrench for the last couple turns on it and there it's snugging up and it's snugging up it just feels like it should like the bolt tightening up you can just feel there's no real major resistance and now we're just going to take and turn it back out now again, once we get going here, this will go pretty good now, if they're on the final cut with the threads. And you can see, there she goes. And there we're back to the little wrench. That didn't take no time flat. One recommendation, if you've never tapped the bolt hole before, before working in a position like this, hopefully you get a chance to practice on some stuff that's a lot easier access, especially stuff where you can work on a bench vise. But yeah, I understand if uh, you've never had done it before and you run into something like this, you don't have no choice but to jump into the hard job. But that's the purpose of this video. Maybe it'll help you out if you do get stuck in the position without prior practice. And there I'm blowing the shavings out with some compressed air. And I'm going to take now and turn a regular 3 8 
bolt in it and just see how it goes in and if it tightens up which it should and we finger tightened it in and now we're just going to snug it up with the wrench make sure it tightens up and it snugs up real nice feels just like it should and on this the manifold bolt torque is 15 to 22 foot pounds which isn't anything like super tight it's not like talking to about head bolts or anything where you'd be dealing with like 75 to 80 foot pounds and now we're just going to turn it back out a few threads there with the wrench and then it will just take and turn out with my thumb and index finger and it's going to be as good as new okay it's back out take a close look at the threads get in as good as i can to show you but you can see there's plenty there for it to bite to. Like I said, it wasn't the easiest place to get in and take a picture of. And it will live for another day. And without pulling the header motor. And be sure after watching this video, check out my video there on the removal of the manifold. And also upcoming video on the reinstall. That'll be on uh, July the 9th.